All right, guys, this is going to be a good one. Talking about going from a wheelie all the way to a splat technique within 18 months of being on a trials bike. This is kind of a culmination video, I think, that's going to add value to a lot of you. And depending upon where you're at, hopefully something will really click with you. So I'm going to be covering a lot of ground here, and this is kind of like building Legos. If you guys have kids and you've seen these instructions, it's kind of like you have to be able to do step one before you can do step two. And if you're missing pieces, then it's not going to work. There's a layered foundation that needs to be in place before you take those building blocks and move on to the next thing. So I'm going to start with just talking about a wheelie. Now, this is very basic, but at the same time, I think you might be able to get something out of this. So we're going to start simply with a wheelie using the throttle. So this is purely on the gas. Then we're going to transition to using your body, push your knees forward, and then pushing back with your arms to get your center of gravity over that rear wheel. Next, we're going to go ahead and add in the clutch. So being able to start a little slower, building up the RPM, then letting out the clutch quickly, then finally adding the front brake. So a little bit of front brake in order to get the suspension to compress in the front. Use that rebound to get your weight back. Wheelies are a ton of fun. Ryan Young's got a lot of great information. This is not a wheelie tutorial, just simply starting from the basics and then moving into more advanced techniques like holding a wheelie. It's definitely easier in a higher gear. This is third gear, much easier not to fall side to side and then finally moving into a short distance wheelie getting that front wheel up quickly can definitely help and i've got a bunch more videos on balance point and how to save it and how that rear brake's got to become automatic if you guys subscribe to the channel see my playlist on wheelies but this wheelie thing is something i used to do all the time it's so fun i would say i probably did i don't know maybe 50 wheelies every time i rode and i'm usually riding like 20 times a month so that's like a thousand wheelies a month, and maybe it wasn't quite that many, but over the course of 18 months, that's gonna be tens of thousands of wheelies where I've just burned it into my body, my brain on how to do this, hips back, hips back. But that's not where I wanna go as it relates to the next movement. So this next bit is all coming from Neil Price. Now, if you haven't seen the online coaching community that I'm a part of, Neil Price has an app that you guys can check out on the Play Store as well as the iTunes store and I've made a whole video review of it but basically he's got a core foundational teaching that I'm going to tell you guys about it is simply rev squat go and that simple idea of revving the bike up squatting and then going releasing the clutch and getting the bike to lift up off the ground is an incredible drill that's just so simple but yet so complex at the same time now what i mean by simple is that when you're on the flat ground just rev squat go it doesn't seem like a whole lot's happening but when you put those together through lots of practice and repetition you can see what these pro riders are doing with this this is the ride technique or the roll-up technique and this is what's getting them way up these obstacles. But Neil has broken it down beautifully into just these three simple steps so that us mere mortals can practice before going after big obstacles. This Neil Price is a tremendous teacher. He's got a lot of information that you guys can find on YouTube on his page, Trials and Enduro Skills. And I've actually joined his coaching community. He's the only guy that I know who's doing an online trials coaching community in its own app. So I'm going to roll in some footage of my early RSG or Rev Squat Go attempts. This was me practicing about a year ago at RSG in my driveway and this was good practice but until I learned how to adjust the type of squat I was doing I wasn't getting the leverage that I really wanted. So I'm going to break this drill down, take it completely into pieces, separate it and then build it back together for you guys because I think it's important that you understand each of these different aspects. Once I learned how to squat differently, I was able to generate more leverage. So I'm going to go into more detail now. So when it comes to revving up the bike, we are looking to learn how to ride on the clutch and not ride on the throttle. So what we're trying to do in this drill is hold a higher RPM and maintain the same speed. And you can actually adjust the RPM you can go higher, you can go lower, and still maintain the same speed. The clutch is actually like a independent linear factor as opposed to an exponential factor. So if I'm just barely engaging the clutch, like maybe in the first ninth or first third window, 
and I'm revving up the bike, I'm not lurching forward. The bike is holding the same speed. And if you haven't realized that yet, it's an eye-opening factor. So what we're trying to do here is just get consistent with the RPM. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to barely slip that clutch, hold the RPM at a nice steady pace. Now in order to maintain that steady pace, you can drag the brake just a little bit. I like to use the front brake so you can rev the bike up, be holding that clutch in, holding those RPM steady, which is harder than you think. We're just doing this first drill just with the clutch, not messing with our body at all. All right, so now let's separate out the squatting part and look just at that. This is not preloading the bike. This isn't jumping down and preloading. This is just a squat. And there's different types of squats. When I think about what I used to do when I was weightlifting with a bar on my back, it was hips back and down. And that was the technique that I can still hear my strength and conditioning coach saying, hips back and down. He would actually say, imagine you're holding a popcorn in this hand and a drink in this hand and you're at the movies and you got to get that seat down that just retracts up automatically and you got to sit your hips back to get the seat and then down. Well, this is different. This isn't going to be like that. This is actually going to be more like your knees are dipping forward. So your knees are going to dip forward over your toes. And this is very different for someone like me. I did not get this type of squat until six months into doing this technique. In order to show you guys what I'm talking about, imagine sitting on a chair and then having to lean forward in order to stand up. If you're sitting all the way back in the chair and your heels are right up against the base of that chair, you've got to rock forward to get your head out over your feet and your hips are still back and then you're standing up. Now imagine that you're gonna scoot your hips right to the edge of that seat. At this point, your hips are directly over your ankles, your head is over your hips, and now with your knees all the way forward, you can just stand straight up. And you can see the difference where your head is just rising straight up. That's actually the type of squat that we're going for in this one. And it's gonna make a lot more sense as we talk about leverage in a little bit. So now let's talk about the go action. The go is simply letting out the clutch and standing up. Now, when we think about letting out the clutch, it doesn't have to be a clutch pop. This isn't like a zap that we're trying to do. It's still a fairly smooth clutch action. I would say it is a full dump, but you can actually allow the slip of the clutch to get right to that engagement point and then let off. That way you're not getting that jerky poppy sensation. So in order to practice that, we're just gonna do some little pops, little clutch pops, little clutch engagements while we're moving slow, no squatting, not big revs, just getting familiar with how it feels when you let out that clutch quickly. Now, if you're moving a little bit faster, like at a medium pace, that clutch pop is less noticeable. So when you go slower, you can feel and that clutch is boom, it's right now. So when we're going faster, we're actually gonna need more RPM to get that same type of lift of that front wheel. So I'm almost ready to put all the pieces together, but I'm gonna do a rev, squat, and clutch release without the standing. And this was really helpful for me to understand what it felt like to accelerate on the clutch and not try and body up that wheelie. So I would encourage you to try the same if you've been following along this far. All right, now we're gonna put it all together. Rev, squat, go. So we're revving up the bike, holding it, squatting down and then going and when we go we're standing up from that dip and this is something that is tricky we're going to go ahead and put out cones in order to make this a drill and work through the timing so that you can get consistent when we separate this out with the cones it keeps you from doing it too quickly and shortening that because your brain needs time to unlearn riding on the throttle your brain needs time to develop this new muscle memory this new pattern and way of thinking so that you're going on the clutch now standing up actually is gonna provide a lot of different benefits, including traction. When you push down on the pegs as you stand, it's adding weight to the pegs. And it's more than just your body weight. It could potentially even double your body weight. Think about being on a bathroom scale. And if you were to stand and, and squat and stand and squat, you can actually see those numbers going up and down. You're adding more weight into the pegs and in through that rear tire than just your body weight alone. All right, now the thing about this rev squat go is you're actually creating lift in the bike. The center mass of the bike in that engine is actually lifting up. So as that lifts up into a wheel, you're actually lifting the bike up. And the pegs are actually on my bike about 14 inches high and they raise up to about 28 inches. 
So plus you standing and those pegs raising, so you got 14 inches of rise going on with the pegs and then you're standing as well, it's kind of like jumping off of a moving swing. If you've ever been on a swing standing up as it's going back and forth and then you jump as the swing is going up, you're getting like a, an incredible lifting sensation. Or if you guys have seen these teeter-totter jumping videos, um, it's not quite that fast, but it's somewhere in between and it's incredible. When you actually get this right, the timing, the clutch release, you'll know it. This will feel different and you'll say, wow. Now we're not actually trying to get to a huge wheelie, that's not the goal of this, but it does happen. Once you do go with the clutch, you can actually disengage the throttle. That's something that happens naturally as you stand up, your wrist usually comes forward and you disengage the throttle. We're going based on the RPM that's been built up and that engine inertia with the flywheel spinning. All right, so for probably about six months, I was doing this action without squatting correctly. My knees weren't dipping forward and I wasn't getting any leverage. So I started to ride this pedal bike and I had an absolute blast and was learning how to real world hop and all of a sudden leverage made a whole bunch of sense. And my online coach Neil was talking all about leverage and I just didn't get it. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys a little bit about this leverage concept. All right guys, drawing time again. So I'm gonna draw this line through the rear tire contact patch up through the pegs and into the handlebar. And then this red is gonna be a pivot point or a fulcrum around which we're gonna be rotating. Now this first image is going to be for a wheelie. I'm not trying to get any leverage. I'm trying to make this as simple as possible. So I'm gonna be pulling the handlebars back and pushing my feet forward. I want little resistance. I'm gonna get my weight back to make this bike rotate as quick and easy as possible. So if this yardstick is like the frame of my bike, you guys get the idea. We're pivoting around that center and the forces are my feet are pushing forward as I'm pulling the handlebars back to make this rotation quick, simple, easy. There's no leverage here, no extra friction. That's totally different than what I'm about to show you. So now when I'm trying to get leverage in this RSG technique, I'm going to move that fulcrum up higher and I'm going to be pulling with the bars at a upward angle. I'm gonna be taking my feet and pushing them down in a downward angle. Now, the contact patch can't really go down. So the rear tire is trying to go down, but it can't really go down. I'm pressing through the pegs and the swing arm is actually getting tension in the system. So the swing arm starting to compress as that rear shock is compressing. I'm setting the bike up ergonomically for that incredible lift as I'm putting leverage. So here again, pushing down through the pegs, lifting up on the handlebars. You guys can see this yardstick is starting to compress. And as this front wheel is coming up, I'm getting some awesome lift and then boing, here we go. So in this image, you can actually see the rear tire lifting off the ground because of the way I've set it up. Now, one thing about dipping your knees forward, if you watch pro riders, anytime they're getting ready to go up a steep step, their knees are in front of their toes because when they're releasing that clutch and they're going, the acceleration is so intense. If they let their hips get behind them and their knees snap back, they're just holding on for the ride. So they need to have their knees in front of their toes. Even you can put your toes down. And so I want to show you a little example as it relates to pulling on the bars. Look at me try and lift up this decently heavy chair. You guys can try this at home, especially if a chair is a nice solid wood. Lifting up this chair is very hard. My feet are actually back the exact distance that they are from the handlebars. I measured that out ahead of time. And now watch as I dip my knees and then try and lift the chair. It's so much easier. So getting those knees forward actually assists in your ability to set up the bike for this leverage as you're pulling on the bars. Now we're not actually pulling up on the bars, but we are pulling them back towards us as we push our feet down through the pegs. So the difference between just standing up on the pegs versus pushing through them can be seen here. My hands aren't assisting, I'm just standing up on the pegs. To push through the pegs, I'm doing something different with my hands. I'm holding on, I'm giving tension. So in this example, my hands are under the handlebars and I'm pushing down. And you guys can see this example in your kitchen. I'm normally around 196 pounds. If I put my hands under this counter and then push up as I'm pushing my legs down, I'm actually adding about 50 pounds worth of leverage. Now I just spent about four minutes talking all about leverage. Is it really that important to drone on about it for that long when no one else is talking about it? Well, no one else except my online coach, Neil, and this channel. And I would say, yes, it is that important because in all honesty, it's not really understood. Now you can see as he's doing this splat, it's right here. He's got tension in his arms. He's pulling up on the bike. It just started the go action. 
and it's that pulling in on the bars that's creating the leverage to assist with the lift. Now I'm sure most pro riders probably aren't even talking about leverage, they're not thinking about it because they just know when I go, I also pull on the bars. But at that higher RPM, at the higher levels, they're just doing it and not having to think about it. But when we are starting out learning to do it, I think it's that important. All right, guys, we are almost there. Transitioning that leverage concept into the RSG, Rev Squat Go. We can actually start looking at riding up some obstacles. So even if you're not great at this Rev Squat Go, you can still do the ride technique over smaller obstacles. I was successful going over 12, even 18 inch obstacles and logs doing this ride technique before I even got the leverage in place. And now that I've got the leverage in place, I've been able to go up walls and even bigger obstacles up to three feet, four feet, because I'm starting to understand how this leverage will assist in lifting the bike higher off the ground. So I actually saw another YouTuber, Sean McGinnis, do this RSG exercise and get lift and actually jump the bike off the rear tire. And I said, whoa, how did he do that? Well, it took about four months before I was in a position where I was trying to do that same type of thing. And you gotta be good at the leveraging of the bike and the RSG exercise, but once you can get into a position where there's a little bit of a hop, you can start to work towards a splat. So at first I tried to do this over a ditch and I was like, oh, look at me, I splattered. And then another friend said, that's not a splat. The reason why it's called a splat is because here's a wall and you're kind of splatting into it just like a bug on a windshield. I thought that makes sense. So I went ahead and took this technique to the wall that I have at my house and I wasn't very successful at all. So I decided to build a kicker and doing the splat with the kicker is very helpful. You want to get your knees to be fully extended. So the timing of it is that you're releasing that clutch right at the time when your front wheel is getting to the kicker so that by the time you're standing completely, your legs are straight as you're on the kicker and there's no place for that suspension to go except to catapult you up. Now this is something that you're gonna have to get dialed in the ride technique before you move to the splat. You're gonna have to rev the bike higher. You're gonna have to get over some RPM anxiety and you're definitely gonna have to pop that clutch. But as you begin to progress into that splat technique, you can experiment with a kicker being uh, further away, being closer, experiment with different size obstacles. For me, I was able to go up this wall, which was a perfect training for me. I had this angled concrete slab in front, so it was a little bit less intimidating. I was still able to get traction. And as I started to experiment with a splat, my ride technique actually got better. Because in order to splat, you have to have your form dialed. I had to be raising straight up instead of bent over at the hips. Which, let me talk for a second. This is something I think a lot of people deal with. They've learned to wheelie and drop their hips back and so their head goes forward and they're over the bar. However, if you watch all the professionals, they're not doing that. They have learned how to allow the bike to get out in front of them and to relax into the movement and let the bike do the work. Now I've shared all this as one solid video of my progression from wheelies up to splats, but really this can be broken down and gone over in a lot more detail and even with more drills in between. So if you guys are interested in more videos like that, comment below. It does help me know where to take this channel because this is second year moto trials. I'm trying to break things down and explain them in a way that makes sense to a beginner rider. I think so often when I go to these trainings and I listen to pros on YouTube, I get a lot out of them, but it's high level. It's hard to understand all the different things that they're doing with their body and their clutch and the RPM. And so this channel, where I'm gonna hopefully take it, is to break it down, to make it smaller and granular and give you guys drills and insight that I've been using that's helped me progress as fast as I have. If this video has added value to you, I wanna encourage you to hit that subscribe button. It means a lot. It's just really simple to hit that button, but 70% of you guys have not subscribed to the channel. So please consider subscribing, comment below, share it with a friend, and I'll see you in the next one. This one's gonna be a good one, guys. Going for the blah. This is how I ride with a little log pad so I know where I'm going.